You know, guys, I love fish, especially in the summertime. Tonight, I'm paying tribute to one of the most popular fish in the world. Salmon. Oh. Salmon. Yeah. I'm talking about barbecued salmon gravlocks with a warm potato salad. How's that, huh? Oh, yeah, just like those other late-night shows. <laughs> Maybe a coho salmon and papillot, and then a warm smoked salmon salad. Yummy, yummy, yummy. That's right. <laughs> yummy, yummy in the salmon tummy. It's a salute to salmon, and it's all happening right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> Started. Give it up for Doc Gibbs and Cliff. How you guys doing? How are you? Little Bam. You must be Big Bam. Little Bam, Big Bam. Huh? Oh, okay. Big Salmon, Little Salmon. Actually, it's really amazing how many varieties of salmon that they are out there. But interesting enough, in North America, about 90% of the salmon actually comes from Alaska. And there's only really one species that comes from North Atlantic. I'm going to talk more about that. But look at some of these salmons. I mean, this is a king salmon that we just got in. Beautiful. Look at this here. When you're looking for salmons and you go to the store, you go to the fishmonger, what you want to do is, of course, you want to check like any fish, the condition of the head, particularly the eyes. The eyes are clear. It's not slimy. This is very, very firm. One particular thing with salmon is that you want to look for that silver color. Very, very important. Oh, look at that. Big salmon, little salmon. And uh, these are some salmon from the Northwest. Then salmon, there's so many things that you can do. This is a little, what they call a coho salmon. People would look at this and really kind of look and say that this is a trout, but really it's a coho salmon. It's a little baby salmon. We're going to do something later on in that. It comes smoked. It comes gravlocks. It comes steaks. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to fillet a whole salmon. Stick around. We'll be right back. Back in. <laughs> Welcome back. Emeril Lagasse here. We're talking about salmon. Give it up, Doc Gibbs and Cliff. I hope you guys didn't miss that on the monitors. Well, I know these guys are rocking out, but did you see how those fish were jumping out of the water like that? It's amazing. I mean, they have a rough journey, these guys. They don't eat when they do that. They travel for miles and miles and miles. They bang themselves up against the rocks. It's kind of like drinking and driving, you know? <laughs> Anyhow, something like that, right, Doc? <laughs> We had to go to the old e-board over here to uh, check it out as the old, uh, oh, the piglets. What can I say? Unbelievable. What happened to the one that we had over here, Jay? I think Jay stole it. <laughs> Jay, what happened to the one? Oh, look, he's got it in his pocket. Look, I can't believe you did that. We had a, uh, an email from Gordon from uh, Belmar, New Jersey, who said, you know, Emerald, I often see a fish. You all from Belmar? Do you know this guy, Gordon? <laughs> Anyhow, it's amazing what happens here in New York City. But his question was is that he often sees a fish called Arctic char sold in the local fish market, 
And he says that it looks very similar to salmon, and are they related? You're not going to believe this, Gordon, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Arctic char is actually a cross between a salmon and a trout. Don't ask me how they got in that neighborhood. I'm just telling you the facts. <laughs> Stick around and watch the show. All right. Salmon, trout, Arctic char. I don't, I don't get it, but anyhow. That's what they said at the home office. All right, we got this salmon right here. And, um... Whoa, 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 whoa. And, um... Smelling good over here, huh, fellas? Oh, yeah. Basically, for some reason, people are, like, really, really frightened when they either order or when they see salmon steaks or any kind of steak fish. And I don't know why, because basically... Here's one right here. All that is is that they'll remove the head, clean up the fish. Of course, they got to scale it. And then what they'll do is basically just cut however thick that they want, leaving the bone inside, as you can see right here, okay? And uh, you got to be careful with any whole fish like this and when you're filleting fish about the bones. The belly end of the salmon, that's this end right here. You know, it's very prized, particularly in Japan. They do a lot of things with that. They can uh, make jerky out of it. They make uh, salmon skin for a lot of their rolls, a lot of things like that. But this is really prized. The reason why is because of the fat content in it. And, you know, all the different varieties of salmon have different higher levels of, of fat content. The greatest thing about salmon is very high in omega-3. That's that oil that makes you feel good and healthy and brain sharp. And <laughs> you become the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> so I tell people, listen, don't be frightened by steak fish. It's just because it has a little bone. But if it bothers you and you want to fillet it, then it's very, very simple to do. One of the easiest ways, no matter if the fish is small or if the fish is big, one of the easiest ways of filleting fish, the first thing is you got to have a sharp knife. That's the first thing. And I know that these are really sharp. Then. There are a couple of different fillet knives that they have that you can, uh, this is more of a boning knife, but this is a boning knife that has a much more flexible tip on that, not to be technical. The easiest way that I tell people to fillet any fish or the salmon is to just kind of follow where the head is here till you get to that bone. And that's the bone that we're talking about right there, the center bone. They're all the same. Doesn't matter if it's a big cod, a big salmon. The next thing that I tell them is that when you find that bone, what you want to do is you want to just kind of take your knife. Of course, I know my big head is like in the way of this thing. But you, when you, once you find that center bone like that, what you want to do is you just want to take the knife, follow that center bone. Just make a little cut, first of all, before you go ruin the whole flesh of any fish that you're going to fillet. Once you got that bone, as I do right here, as you can see, then, the next thing that you want to do is just run your knife right along that bone like that. You see how that is there? You want to just run your knife right around that bone like that and follow it right to the tail. Then what I like to do is I find it again here on the tail, and then I just come on the belly side like this, holding it. And this is a big fish. The thing about salmon is that the average weight is about 8 to 15 pounds. But let me tell you, there's been salmon that have been caught 140, 150 pounds. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah. See, now that we've got this filleted like this, you can scrape this down more. You've got a little salmon. You can smoke it. I'm going to show you all how to do that. You can take the whole side of salmon or whatever you fish that you're going to do, and you're going to make this classic, classic dish called Gravlox. But not only are we going to make Gravlox, we're going to kick it up a notch with barbecue salmon Gravlox. Stick around. We'll be right back. Yeah. 
it's important to know that there are five different and distinct species. They vary in size, in color, in flavor, and in texture. There are kings, sockeye, coho, chums, and pinks. Hey, hey, welcome back, everybody. Emeril Lagasse here. And we're talking about salmon, and we've got all kinds of people who know about salmon. We got salmon music by Doc Gibbs and Cliff. You should be with us. We're live in New York City. All right. So now that we got the filet of salmon, that wasn't too difficult. Now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of trim it up a little bit. What I like to do is take a little bit of that belly like that. Generally, what we do at the restaurant is we'll We'll either smoke this or we'll make some sort of jerky with this, move it from the bones, and we'll just kind of use a little salmon jerky or a little bit of smoked salmon like that, and we'll use it for flavoring. Then you want to make sure after that that you've gotten all the bones. Where the belly is in any fish, there'll always be these little pin bones like that, so you want to be sure that you get all the bones out of there. And then if uh, any of these kind of spots that bother you, you might want to trim those up like that. And then the next thing that we're going to do is you ask yourself, some people just flip out when you have skin on their fish. I mean, if you scale it and wash it and do all the things, you know, it doesn't bother me. But some people, ah! It's like, <laughs> what that? Well, we won't go there. Anyhow, it's a lot of children tonight. But if that's the case and you, like, don't want to do that and you need it to have it skinned, that's okay. What I'm going to do, what you doing with little Bam over there? <laughs> Take it easy on that poor little guy. He's too young to eat uh, those, those frozen things, right? Good. <laughs> when in doubt, there's always these. And dad, leave the kids cookies alone. <laughs> I know how they are. All right, so now, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna cut a piece about so big to make some grav locks, and I wanna keep the, uh, the skin on this, on this over here. So I'm gonna put this over here in the old grav locks territory. Then, for those of you that that skin thing really kinda bothers you, Here's the next step of what you do. You make like a little cut like this at the tail end. Don't go through the skin. Just take the knife like this. You see how I'm doing that? Until you get to the skin, just like that. Then what you do is you can hold on to this. Use a good knife like I am right here. You see? And just keep it right along the skin side like that, on kind of an angle like that. And you can just take the whole skin right off, just like that. Okay? <laughs> Those of you that like extra skin, <laughs> this is for you. If you're like a really skin fanatic, like I am, you can just take a little piece like this. Take your salmon like that. You can just wrap it all in the skin like that. Oh, come on. All right. Let me show you about this Gravlox. You know, it's a Scandinavian way of curing fish. And they would take salt, sometimes with a little dill, sometimes with a little citrus, maybe a little bit of black pepper. And then they would make this mixture, sometimes with vodka, sometimes not. And then they would take the salt mixture using kosher salt, put it on the fish, wrap it in plastic, weight it down, cure it for about 24 hours, rinse it, and they would have beautiful grav locks. That's when we came in. I said to myself, self, how am I going to kick these grav locks up a notch? So what I did is this. I took the kosher salt. 
Then I made some of my homemade barbecue sauce. Oh, yeah, babe. Feel like a cowboy ain't even there. <laughs> Took some of that homemade barbecue sauce like that. Decided to mix it all in with that salt like that. You see? Then, that's some Gravlocks barbecue music by Doc Gibbs. <laughs> I took the flesh like this and seasoned it up. You could use a little bit of that Southwest spice I got. And then what you do is you just take that, pour it right over. Mm. Then what you want to do, like I've told you before, you got to make sure that you really, really wrap this really good when you're going to do this Gravlox, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're going to wrap it up in a nice package like this. Using this plastic so that there's no air. And then... The next thing that you do is you got to weight it, just like if you were making re regular grav locks. Now, you got to put the skin side up like this. Some people like the skin side down. Give me a break. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> As Hilda would say, give me a break in life. Now, you got to weight it. Once you got it wrapped real good, no air in there, it's like, you know, you read these books, it says, wait it. Well, what does that mean? You know, go out and get yourself a couple of bricks. <laughs> no, you can. You just wrap them in like, you know, that foil stuff. That works well. If you're like in a very, very, you know, rough neighborhood like me, you don't have bricks. Basically all termited infested wood. <laughs> then what you can do is get yourself a couple of cans of tomato juice like this. Wrap them in uh, foil, and then you can weight them down just like that. You see? And then what you do, stay. <laughs> I hate when they don't cooperate. There we go. Now, you got to put these in the refrigerator like this for about 24 hours. And the salt inside of that's going to cure it. The barbecue sauce is going to, like, give it some amazing, amazing flavor. Now, what are you going to do with this barbecue salmon? Well, this is what I'm going to start with real quick. I'm going to take a little oil. I'm going to add some onion. I'm going to cook that onion for about four or five minutes. Make it happy. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. <laughs> then, that pepper starts getting happy with the onions four or five minutes. Whatever kind of sausage you like. I'm using some ground chorizo for my friends in Fall River. Hey, maybe you want to have ground kibasi. It doesn't matter. Whatever you like. Just don't try that at home. How do Oreos work in mom? Good. I like that. He's going to love this too because I'm adding about 55 cloves of garlic in here right now. Then I'm going to add some potatoes, and I'm going to start this potato salad. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish it, and then it's coho salmon and papillot. Stick around. <laughs> If you're just tuning in, shame on you because salmon is on the menu tonight and so is Doc Gibbs and Cliff, right? <laughs> so you get that sausage and the potatoes and the onion and the garlic and we seasoned it up, start cooking it in. It's potato salad, but it's kind of almost like a hash almost, you know? 
And then uh, we're going to add some parsley in there. Hilda will be real happy now. All right, Mom, there you go. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to re-season that. You want to taste it, re-season it. Then we'll turn that off. Looks good. Smells better. Now, after 24 hours, when you take this barbecued Gravlox out, remember, it's got all that curing salt. It's got all that kosher salt. So what you want to do is you want to unwrap it. And then you can see how it's a lot more firm, and you can see that the meat is actually cooked. Now, it's salty. Simon says, give it a bath. <laughs> this is this new, I don't know if you guys have seen this new sink that's out right here that we have right here. Bowl. It's actually solarized right here, and it actually just runs by, you know, the lights of the studio and the sun if we're outside. It's really kind of cool. You should really stop and get yourself one on the way home. But once you wash it like that underneath the sink, you can see how, you, how it's cooked like that. Now you're in business. Then we're going to dry it off, get the beach towels out, you know, just kind of <laughs> dry it off real good. We'll lose this. Then, now you're ready to really go. Once you get it really good and dried off like this and washed, now it becomes fun. You can do all kinds of things that you want to do. As an example, you could do some slices of this and put it in a salad, maybe with arugula, maybe with a little lemon. You could make a little crouton. You could make little corn cakes and dice some of this up and have it with a little creme fraiche or a little sour cream on top. Oh, that would make me happy right now. <laughs> you could toast some cornbread like I did. And then basically what you do, you get some really, really thin slices. Use that sharp knife. And you got to kind of start working with an angle a little bit like this. So you, should, you guys should taste, taste a little piece of that. Because they don't think we cook at home. They think we're just, you know. Mm. Isn't that unbelievable? Yeah. You taste the barbecue yeah. flavor in there yeah. real light? Now, you want to you want to slice this very, very thin. Almost so that you can, like, see paper. Like, it's very, very paper thin. Check it out, my friend. All righty. Now, what you do is you start slicing this. Hey, when you're not using it anymore, no big deal. You just wrap it back up in the plastic, keep it in the refrigerator. It's a beautiful thing. Lasts a, you know, really lasts a couple of weeks. Here's how I like to do it myself. I like to take some of this potato salad like this. Now, this is, you know, if I was eating an hors d'oeuvre, <laughs> I'd take a little bit of this potato salad like this. And then what I would do, I'd slice that Gravlox, and I would just take these little pieces like this, and I would just kind of like do these little rosettes like this, you see? and put them on the, and then I have one like that for me. And we'll take another little thin piece like this. See, real thin. And what you do is you just kind of, you just kind of roll it like this, just really, just kind of put it there. Hey, maybe you want a little caviar cream underneath. That one's for me too. Oh yeah, caviar cream underneath, that would work for me. And if you want to make that, it's very simple. You take some sour cream, just thin it out with a little bit of uh, a little bit of white wine or a little water, and then just fold in some cold caviar in there. Maybe a little bit of chives, salt and pepper. You'd be happy. That one's also for me. <laughs> and then one for you. <laughs> See how it works. It's an easy game. It's called a three-to-one special. One there are happy hours like that too. You know, yeah. one for me. Oh no, I'm gonna share. Anyhow, there it is. Barbecue salmon gravlox corn. <laughs> Cornbread croutons. <laughs> Got to make some friends. One of the famous things in New Orleans that's been there for a long time is a dish called papillot. Been at a restaurant called Antoine's for over 100 years, mostly with the uh, di dish called papio, pompano and papillot. Basically, you need some of this paper like this. And it comes waxed, unwaxed. They got all kinds of things. Hey, you could use a big lunch bag as long as it didn't have, like, any dye on it, you know? And then what you want to do to get fancy is you kind of take it, you fold it in half, as I did here, and then what you do is you just kind of make... 
You make this kind of little hot shape. Not going through. Just make a little hot shape like this. And then, once you get that shape like this, that was some frog music by Doc Gibbs. Thanks a lot, Doc. I'm just gonna go right for the butterfly of it right now, you know? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> My heart stands for you, baby. <laughs> so it's kind of like a butterfly kind of thing. But here's how simple it is. Check this out. You need some oil, because you gotta brush the parchment so it doesn't burn. You can do this with any, anything. It's amazing. I've got some fresh herbs. You want to have them non-hosh herbs. Then this is what I got. I got some potato, I got some onion, I got black olives, I got slices of tomato. Why? Because it makes me happy. That's what I wanted to put in there. I got a little bit of preserved lemon. If that bothers you, you don't have to put it in there. Here's how simple it is. I got those coho salmons, remember? Yeah. All right, what we're going to do is this. We're going to take the head off. All right. And then... You take this side right here with your brush and olive oil and you want to brush the paper. You want to brush it really pretty good too. Like I said, this is not only going to give it flavor, it's also going to prevent it from burning. Then there's a whole trick to why you do this papillot trick. What it is is that it creates this incredible steam based on the technique of how you wrap it. And like I said, you could do this with thin chicken breasts. You could do this with all kinds of fish. You could do this with shellfish. You could do this with all vegetables. Here's the deal. I like to start with a couple of bit of potatoes like this. Now, if you want more, you're hungry, hey, add a few more. Then, a couple of slices of tomato. They're not seasoned. Got to be seasoned. A little bit of salt, a little pepper. Hey, maybe you like onion. Maybe you don't. Maybe you like zucchini. We'll put some onion in there. I like black olives. I'm adding some black olives. A little piece of preserve. Lemon. Then you take the fish. You season the fish like this so it tastes good. Put the fish like that. Are you with me out there? Yeah. Are you with me out there? Yeah. Just checking. Here's the whole, maybe you want to put a little bit of herbs too to kick it up a couple of notches. Here it is, look, you fold it over, make it even. This is the whole technique right here of papillot, okay? What you got to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. What you got to do is you got to just make a crease like this. And you make another crease. Then you make another crease. The whole reason why you're doing this is you're capturing all those flavors, all those vapors in there and it's going to be all natural. You don't need any sauces. Then when you get a couple of creases like this, then you make another one. You cross it over. You see how I'm doing that like that? And you cross it over and you keep going. Two, three times. Then you cross it over. Two, three times. Cross it over. You do that all the way around. You set your oven on about 375 degrees. You put it in there for about 15, 16 minutes starts ballooning up a little bit, all the vapors in there. Oh, I'm so happy right now. Stick around when we come back. I'll show you what it looks like. Thank you. everybody well we are saluting salmon here tonight and uh, while you guys might have went to the refrigerator and got one of those cold things we uh, we put the uh, poppy 
in the oven. And they're just kind of cooking really, really nice bags starting to get poofy. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set up a smoker. Very inexpensive stovetop smoker, either electric burner, gas burner that you can do at home. You get your favorite wood that you like that you can buy in the stores today. They come in all types of flavors and shapes. I personally like hickory. But they got all this apple wood, grape seed, all kinds of things. You got to soak the wood a little bit in some uh, regular water for about 15 minutes. Then what you do, you set up your smoker. Like I got it right here. You see how that rack is? Smell that? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to rub this with a little bit of oil. And I'm going to put a little of my spice on here, whatever kind of spice you like. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start smoking our own salmon. Why? Well, yeah, I like it. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, there we go. See that? Bam! Now, I got one burner on. That wood's going to start really getting really smoky in there, and the heat from the burner. How's the grab locks? Not bad, huh? Uh, what can I say? <laughs> now, while that's smoking, a couple of more of my favorite things, because I'm going to do this kicked up homemade smoked salmon salad for you all. What I did is I rendered out some bacon. It's a pork fat thing. Once it got crispy, I'm going to take that bacon like that, just kind of drain it. Then, I'm going to save a little bit of that bacon, bacon oil. Well, let's get down to it. Let's... Bacon fat, that's what it is. And we're gonna save the bacon fat. Now, I got some Vidalia onions. You know, they're hitting all over the place. You can get them when they come in season, keep them in a cool place. I sliced them about a half inch thick. Gonna season them with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And then what I'm gonna start doing with these so I'm going to start grilling these. You could smoke these, too, if you wanted to. Wouldn't offend me. I love the daily onions. Especially if you put a little, oh, I know, if you put a little tiny heat to them, I mean, they're great raw, but you put a little bit of heat to them like this for the salad that I'm going to show you, it's unbelievable. See, I'll just take a little bit of that seasoned oil like that and go on the other side. That way, both sides, you know. Oh, yeah, babe. All right, so now that's going. The smoked salmon's going. We got our crispy bacon. Now, I got some baby spinach. Well, maybe not so baby. I got some ripped off spinach today at the supermarket. And basically, if you're feeling as ripped off as I am right now, you should at least wash it. You know what I'm saying? You may want to wash it a couple of times. And then, I tell people all the time when they're washing their greens, you got to dry them. If you don't dry them, you just kind of ruin the, all the dressing. You ruin the salad. So, you want to make sure that you really get in there and just sort of gingerly, you know. Biggest thing that happens is people never check the bottom of the bowl. They start drying them and they never do this. Look, you want to talk about ruining your salad like that. I mean, you want to really make sure that you got that. Now I got a mess, my salt's ruined, and I got ripped off spinach. Unbelievable. But it's going to taste good, Mom, I promise you. Try and shame, Doc. It's like you're going to go buy a symbol, you know, and you come out and it's warped. Ah, that's no fun. No, oh, you know, who wants to play a warped symbol? <laughs> You know, it kind of got that thing going on like that. All right. Going to turn over these videos. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh. I wish you were here. You could feel the Vidalia love right now. 
So we're going to turn these over. They just get nice and tender like this. Let's check on our salmon. This is like a blaze right over here right now. I think we got like a bonfire. Look at that. You see how quick that thing smokes like that? I mean, this is almost done. So are my eyes. <laughs> I hate when it doesn't cooperate like this. There you go. Bam! Bam! All right, we got spinach. Now, let me show you one more of my favorite ingredients. I got some water here, and I'm bringing it up to a boil. The reason why is that I want to do this salad with some poached eggs. But you know, you need a little help when you poach eggs. Vinegar. You could use lemon juice too, but vinegar. It's really going to make the albumin all come together in the egg. Happy, happy. So you add a little bit of salt, and then you add just a little, oh, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Then I'll show you what it does. You crack the egg like this, and then you just slowly let that. Now watch, watch it all come together. If it doesn't, you didn't add enough vinegar. <laughs> but if you add too much vinegar, you're in trouble, because then, basically after that, oh, look at this. We're going to check our poppy yachts. They're not done. <laughs> That's when this comes in. We're going to a commercial break. Stick around. We'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. We're saluting salmon. We got things all over the place right now, but we're happy about that. There's the poached eggs. You saw me, right? Took them out. See how they just went just like that. What I like to do when they come out, just kind of lightly season them like this. I took the Vidalia onions off, too. Nice and grilled, sweet like that. Oh, amazing. While you were, uh, well, we won't go there. We turned this flame off right here. Look at this, our salmon. Look at the smoked salmon of love. Look at that, huh? Beautiful. Now, oh, that's going to fit on there, all right? Oh, yeah, look at that. See, I love when that happens, the challenge. That ain't going anywhere. Just for that, you're going in the salad. So we got our smoked salmon out now. So we got our salmon, spinach, Vidalia onions, crispy bacon. There's only one thing missing, don't you think? I wonder how our poppy yachts are doing. We're going to check on one. Oh! See, look at this. Look. See that? Here's what you do. You kind of take one out just like that. And then the way that you uh, normally would serve these, you'd serve this at the table like this. And then just with a, a knife and a fork, what you would do is just go around the outside of the bag like this. You see that, guys? Then what you do is you just take your fork, put it in there like this. And then what you do is just turn it like this and roll it right back. You see that? And then you can see how that salmon, the meat, look at this. You see how nice and cooked that is with the tomatoes and the potatoes and the olives? Oh! So there you have it. Little Papillot, make some friends. Right. Now, here's what we're gonna do. I got that bacon uh, oil in there, right? I figured now what we'll do is we'll add some spinach in that. A Little bit of spinach, as much as you like. Fresh ground pepper, love it, love it, love it. A little bit of salt. <laughs> then what you're going to do is you're just going to sort of lightly toss this like that. Put that on the bottom of your plate, just slightly warm like this. Doesn't that look good? Then what I like to do is just flake some of that beautiful salmon that we did. Just like that. Some Vidalia onions like that. 
couple of poached eggs just like this. And then, of course, if you're like me, I love bacon, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of all over like that. I love bacon just kind of like that. Hey, what can I say? I'm Emeril Lagasse.